verbose build of Abzan that we have seen in months past. Yeah, and, and, and this is typically a, a solid matchup for decks like Jeskai, because you just have a smooth curve and some counter spells and disruption to break up the top end. A big surprise that Kevin has a Mantis Rider on the battlefield. On the other side of things, though, Dean does have a Siege Rhino, a Seder Wayfinder. Looks like maybe a Dramokas Command is on the stack. A couple of lands here from William as well. Kevin's got all the colors of mana base. Looks like he's casting a Stoke the Flames right now. No damage necessary, given the Mantis Rider providing one red. And the Mystic Monastery providing the other. Here's a hero's downfall. I think we might have been seeing a block here. Perhaps. I feel like we're mid-lethal attack. All right, yeah. figured it out. Yep. Kevin was trying to have the Manus Rider block the Siege Rhino and Stoke to get off the table. Hero's downfall kills it. The way Trample Damage works, all gets assigned to Kevin. That's four points of damage. Say to Wayfinder coming across, that's the fifth point. We're on game three. Well, that's where we're going. Game number three here between Kevin Jones and William Dean. Kevin going to take a moment here, it appears, as they get ready for game number three. So we will find some time to talk about some Magic Origins cards. Fire one up. I want to talk about Languish. OK. I like Languish. Uh, of all the cards that we've talked about so far, this is the easiest one to just say, hey, this is going into a standard deck that already exists. Because with the new Flip Planeswalkers, it's very unclear where those cards are going to go. You don't know if they're going to spawn new archetypes. It's very unclear if they're going to go into existing archetypes as well. You know, a, a card like Nyssa, which is already pretty popular, it, 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 even though that card seems like it's going to be really good, I don't really know where that goes. I don't know if it slides into Obzon when Corsair and Dent Protector and Deathmiss Raptor are cards. I think it slots in pretty easily to Devotion Shells. Okay. Because you, you, you already kind of want that effect, and you also want some, some big game punch when the game drags out, and this is good at both stages. But we know this card is going into Obzon. In some number. In some number. I, I'm not saying it's a four of, but it's going to be somewhere in the 75. Maybe it's only in the sideboard. Who knows? But, I mean, this card just, the way that it works with Obzon and Tassiger and Siege Rhino, it, it's so obvious that it's impossible, at least in my opinion, for it not to go in there. Uh, now, I'm not saying that this replaces Drown and Sorrow because they're different cards and you want them for different matchups. But you've seen plenty of matchups, you know, Jeskai Aggro, for example, where you have Drown and Sorrows in your sideboard. It's really good against a portion of their deck and not good against another portion of their deck. And sometimes, they go turn three Manus Rider, and you're looking at a Drown Sorrow in your hand, and you go, well, this, this stinks. Yep. Languish in those kind of matchups, where, where Drown Sorrow is good but not great, you're not quite sure if it, you know, it's good against a portion of the deck or, and not good against others, Languish is really good in those kind of matchups. Agreed. Green Devotion is another example of this, where Drown Sorrow sometimes is really good and sometimes is a blank. Whether or not it fits into main decks is a different question. It's, a, it's hard right now because of how popular Obzon is. It doesn't kill some of the creatures in the deck. We know mm -hmm. Tassiker and Siege Rhino, and, and there's other going to be other big creatures coming down the pipeline where this card doesn't do very much. So does it replace end hostilities in those kind of decks? I don't know. But it's going to be all over the place in sideboards, for sure. And I think for certain builds of control that are really in the market for earlier board stabilization, this card could replace a couple copies of cards like Crux of Fate or end hostilities that are currently in that slot. I, I, when you see a card like this, four mana, minus four, minus four, you know, I, I think of card's abilities to push cards out of the format. You know, I always kind of talk about Flame Tongue Kavu and what it did to cards during its day, which was a long time ago, and I don't think we're ever releasing really anything like that again, where cards like Blinding Angel and other cards I can't even think of were just pushed out of the format. We see it now with so Dramoka's Command. That's a the little best thing. Bit. A lot of enchantments have been kicked out the door because yeah. Dramoka's Command is just too good against stray enchantments that are floating around on the table. And I think we might see that because of this card. You know, just creatures of the four toughness that might be really good might just get kicked to the curb now. You know, I'm thinking about how this card might play against, you know, obs on aggro decks where you mm -hmm. think of their creatures with Death Dealer and Fleece Mainline and Anafenza and really outside of Siege Rattle, even Bermaz is just kills all this stuff. Yes. So it, their start of, you know, Fleece Mainline into Bermaz into, you know, whatever, it's just, okay, all your stuff's dead. I don't care. And that's a card that's that's definitely worth mentioning is Fleece Mainline because that's a card that gives you game against end hostilities and gives you game against Crux of Fate and some yep. other removal spells. Language cleans that up. Yep. And, and that, that's a big difference there. I think you can say the same thing, too, about Whispered Elemental. Yes. That card is obviously very, very powerful. We've seen Devotion decks be quite good and slotted in some other places as well. Some different obs on builds, people trying that a little while ago. And Whisper Elemental, I think its power we've all found out is it's a really, really powerful card, but this is clean against it. Right. And part of the, you know, part of it, its cleanness is insulating you a little bit from removal spells. Language, again, very good in that spot. So I, I think this is going to be definitely a standard staple. I don't think you're really going to see much of it in modern because that's not really a four-mana sweeper format. Yep. You've got better options in terms of clean removal. But for standard, going to be all over the place while it's legal. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, obviously, it pairs up beautifully with Siege Rhino and Tasker. Maybe we find it in blue-black control decks as well. But we will find out soon enough. But this one is pretty obviously good. And you just go from there. I think this card is way more likely to push cards into the format than it is to push cards out. Okay. Because, it, you know, 
a four-man sweeper versus a five-man sweeper, that matters, but it's going to be good in a lot of the same matchups. What I think this will have a habit of doing is people are going to be searching for five toughest creatures to top off their curve. Sure. So cards like, you know, we already see Tastic or Siege Rhino, something like Angel of Tides, you're a little bit more inclined to put that card in your deck while this is floating around because you don't lose your entire board when you get hit with Languish. Maybe a little less powerful, but better if Languish is popular. Exactly. I think we're going to see more five toughest creatures float into the format if this card's really prevalent. We'll see how it goes, but we're going to head back to our feature match right now. Kevin Jones is back, and Ganon 3 is going to be underway here in just a moment. Him versus William Dean. Jeskai aggro all the time here for Kevin Jones against Abzan Reanimator. We'll see how things do line up for these two players, both of them in top eight contention. Dean is 10-3, and three, Jones 11-2. and two. So even if Jones does lose this match, he can still make the top eight, especially because he's got good breakers. We know oh, that. Oh, great breakers. <laughs> two buys coming in. Number one on the season three leaderboard qualified for the Players' Championship is Kevin Jones. He'll be on the play here for game number three. We'll see what he can find with his Jeskai deck. Looks like he already has a copy of Mantis Rider in hand. And... Pretty quick keep as well. William Dean going to keep his hand. And we are going to be underway here in game number three. Joe's going to start with the Temple of Epiphany. Take a look at that top card. Quickly goes to the bottom. We'll see what Dean's first turn brings. Picked up a copy of Crux of Fate. Temple of Silence is his opening land. Now, William Dean's deck is Obzon Reanimator. Reanimator. He does have two copies of Whip of But this is pretty close to Obzon Control. Really, the only outliers in the main deck are the two copies of Whip of and the one copy of Soul of Theros. Otherwise, we're looking at a pretty stock obs on control deck. Well, Soul of Theros is uh, a card I haven't heard for a really long They're time. Yeah, here's a thought seize. Pretty timely one. You see the Mantis Rider in hand, also a copy of Dragon Lord Ochatai, and then a Disdainful Stroke to go along with the Battlefield Forge, a Flooded Strand, and a Plains. That Soul Cycle, I haven't seen much of that. It's been a bit. Yeah. Part of it is there's less copies of Whip of Erebos floating around because there's less co there's more copies of Dramoka's Command floating around, and that's sort of a sideways consequence. Mantis Rider was the selection. Dean will play a land and pass the turn back. Jones will take a draw step. Temple of Triumph is what he's found. That's the land he'll play for the turn. Take a look at that top card. That card will stay on top. We head back to William Dean. Dean picked up a copy of Dent Protector for the turn. Maybe it's time for a Seder Wayfinder. It appears as though it is. Ultimate Price is one, Corsair Crufix is two, Lenore Waste is three, and Forest is four. Now here's another Thought Seize. That one's going to cost three life here for Dean. Remember, Jones did keep his card on top with that Temple of Triumph. It's unclear what that card is at this point. But we know exactly what Jones is working with, Disdainful Stroke and Dragon Lord Ojitai, so we'll see what Dean wants to select. And if Dean's got a Den Protector in hand, I like just taking Dragon Lord Ojitai out of here, you have the tools to work around the Disdainful Stroke, either by overpowering it or by eventually uh, going ahead and getting the Thoughts he's back and taking the, Dragon, the, the counter spell. I think this play is reasonable, taking the other card here, if his plan is just simply to play Den Protector and get back the Thoughts he's right now. Jones going to play Soulfire Grandmaster off the top of his deck. That's what he kept. He'll get a basic island, leaving up Disdainful Stroke that he doesn't have in his hand because all he has is Dragon Lord Ojitai at this point. Yep. And you see him playing with his hand face up because William knows the contents. So do you at home. Battlefield Forge, Plains, and Dragon Lord Ojitai. So we're going to head back William Dean's way. He's done a nice job of slicing and dicing his way through Kevin's hand. And we'll see what Kevin can put together here outside of that Dragon Lord Ojitai. Did prioritize Soulfire Grandmaster pretty high, keeping it on top of the temple. Might just be better than a random draw, though. I, I think that's part of it, too. And he did have Disdainful Stroke in his hand at the time. Uh, he didn't know that it was going to get Thought Seized away. I, I think it more than anything else, it's just more powerful than his average draw. There's a Windswept Teeth. Dean will sacrifice that. Go down to 14. You might have a Siege Rhino on the way here in just a second. He'll get a Plains. If he doesn't have an answer to Dragon Lord Ojitai ready to go, then I still question whether or not I would have taken, taken the Disciple Stroke out of that hand. Because with Den Protector, it feels like he can work around that fairly easily. Jones will untap. He'll draw a card. Another Temple. There's land number five. Here's Dragon Lord Ojitai number one. D knew that was coming, so, you know... If that hits him, it's his own fault. Yep. It looks like he has Hero's Downfall and Crux of Fate in hand, so he's got a couple plans. Okay. Here. It's unclear if he has land number five at this point. I don't believe he does. He can leave up Downfall, 
He can cast Den Protector and allow himself to get hit once, though that is quite risky. I don't want to get hit ever by Dragon Lord Ochita. Are you kidding me? Here comes Siege Round. I'm curious if Kevin has any interest in blocking. It appears he doesn't. He's so light on action right now. His, his hand's just two lands. I, I feel like he's got to give himself a shot to connect with Dragon Lord Ochita. Den Protector going to get cast face down. This means that Dean is basically letting Kevin hit him. Unless he has a copy of Murder's Cut in hand, which he may have. And it looks if like he has he does. Murder's Cut, then this is bananas. Yeah, it looks like he does have Murder's Cut. Kevin's going to shrug the shoulders. Yeah, and this is a cut. So this is this is a giant beaten. Yeah, this is excellent. Yeah. If William had this all set up the whole way, then his initial thoughts was very good. Yeah. Cut takes care of the Dragon Lord. Kevin is just actually just flat out of gas. Yeah, he's got nothing now. He'll play a temple. Take a look at the top card here. We'll see where it's going to go. It's going to go to the bottom, so he's at the mercy of his own draw step, and William Dean is very, very far ahead in this game. Dent Protector is going to unmorph. It'll get a counter here in just a moment. Ultimate Price is going to come back. That'll take care of Soulfire Grandmaster. Here come the beatdowns for a healthy eight. Jones down to four. See if Jones has any spell in hand. Looks like he does have one card hanging out in Ojitai's command. Yeah, I suppose he can get back Soulfire Grandmaster, draw a card, block the Wayfinder, and hope that he finds axe. Fi yeah. Hope that he finds gas. Get some life back too. You know, if he's got a roast somewhere in his deck, he can, he can pull himself two back in. Game isn't over just yet, but it's not looking good for Kevin. Yeah, he's got to draw very well. He did draw a copy of Dragonlord Ojitai, which is a start, I suppose. Dean without a land to play, so he'll just pass the turn back. Jones will untap and draw. Battlefield Forge, Dragonlord Ochitai, and didn't get a great look at his draw step there. It's actually a copy of Stoke the Flames. Not the worst draw with the Soulfire Grandmaster out there. Here's five mana. Kevin actually able to play Dragonlord Ochitai and keep up. To stoke the flames. Yep. Things get a little interesting now. Trying to make a bit of a comeback. I believe that was land number five that just got picked up. Here comes Siege Round. Kevin got to go down to three. It was land number five, but it's a temple, so it enters the battlefield tapped. Take a look at that top card. Now, the upshot here is Hero's downfall is still doing a lot of work for William. Absolutely. If Kevin pulls the trigger on a burn spell, you can kill the Soulfire Grandmaster in response. If he attacks with Dragon Lord Ojitai, you have a removal spell. So. Must be a tough scry here. Looks like it's going to go to the bottom here for Dean. And Dean will just pass the turn back with Hero's downfall at the ready. Kevin will draw. Stoke the flames in hand. Looks like he picked up a copy of Disdainful Stroke. Rocking a hard place. Looks like Soulfire Grandmaster is feeling a little frisky. In it comes. I like leaving Ochitai back on defense. Might be time to trade with that Siege Rhino. There's three mana. There's a hero's downfall. Gonna go after the Soulfire Grandmaster. I'm not sure if, if William announced anything, but I think I would have preferred a block with the Dem Protector first, because you might get Kevin to cast a burn spell and try to rebuy it before his Soulfire Grandmaster's on the way out, and then you can downfall in response. Worst case scenario is you just block, and then if you pass, you pass, and everything's good. This situation actually gets... Might get a little awkward for William, because I think he's expecting his Crux of Fate to resolve on Dragons. Yep and Kevin has a disdainful stroke in hand. So what I can see Kevin doing here is just say, all right, I'll stoke the flames, kill your den protector. I'll get my four life, kill your creature. I'm going to lose my Soulfire Grandmaster. Then I got a bit of a stare off here between Dragonlord Ojitai and Siege Rhino, and I'll take Dragonlord Ojitai in that fight. So Kevin's going to go up to seven, pass the turn back. And Dean's going to untap. We'll draw a card. Thoughts he's 
was the draw, I believe. Here's Crux of Fate, and he's going to counter that. Here comes Siege Rhino. I'm not blocking it if I'm Kevin. Yeah, you gotta you gotta give yourself a, a shot to draw out of it, especially with William missing land drops with three cards in hand. Yep, they're spells, and Kevin just gotta try to get his own spells. Kevin gonna start by playing a Temple of Epiphany. That was his draw for the turn. William's showing another crux of fate, but that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't, that doesn't mean anything at all. Kevin could draw a removal spell for Siege Rhino. Yeah. And then we play on. Yeah, if I draw a roast, I'm still alive. Here's an attack. He could draw a dig through time and be ahead. That's also true. Take a look at the top three cards. I think he found a glare of heresy. Okay, we play on. Yeah, we, we, we're still playing some magic here. Can't get too far ahead of yourself. Actually, a Valor Stance may have been found. Interesting on what to select there. Up here's V-Stance. Uh, I don't know if I like that more or worse than Glare of Heresy, because I think there's argument of maybe I still want Glare of Heresy left in my deck, but yeah. there's also the, the fact that, you know, Den Protector can actually get back the Siege Rhinos. Right, so. it's, you know, it's... Six of one, half dozen of another, I think. The, the implications of what's left in your deck I don't think mean a whole lot. Kevin going to play a Morph. I believe that is only Stratus Dancer. Indeed. Yeah. Be because we're joining this in game number three, it's unclear if William has ever seen this card. William's draw last turn. It's a copy of Elspeth. Here's a Seder Wayfinder. Temple is one. Heroes Downfall is two. Sansa Citadel is three. And Corsair is four. Temple predictably going to go to the hand, then onto the battlefield. You'll get a Scry. That card will go to the bottom for Dean. He'll pass the turn back. Kevin with some big draws available. He will draw a card. That's a Mantis Rider. That counts as a big draw. Yes, it does. And if, if, if he, if William goes for a removal spell here and Stratus Dancer gets unmorphed, this is a two-turn clock. Yep. Now, a tough spot here for Kevin is how aggressive does he want to get? I'm, I'm attacking with both. Yeah? I guess Stratus Dancer gives you some real protection. And if William doesn't have Stratus Dancer on his radar, and he needs, if he's aware that Stratus Dancer could be down there, he needs to block the morph now. Yep. Because if he goes, all right, Abzan Charm, your Manus Rider, well, Stratus Dancer on morphs counters that. Now both creatures are flying. It's six points in the air. And then it's lethal next turn. He just needs to chump block the morph right now. Assuming he's aware of what it could be. Things got a little difficult here. Some timely draw steps here from Kevin. I suppose, in theory, it could be Ash Cloud Phoenix. In theory. It would make sense for Kevin to put it... I, I think it's reasonable Kevin would have put it down the previous turn because he was facing down a 1-1 one, one, Watt 3 life. But he's kind of jammed up now as part of this. I suppose what he can do here, if he's sure, if he's pretty sure it's Stratus Dancer, he's got to take the hit first and then do this at the end of the turn. So this is interesting because now he's going to cast Obs on Charm on his Seder Wayfinder. This is before block, so Kevin's going to unmoor Stratus Dancer. He's going to counter that. Gets a counter. William goes down to four, which is notable because of Stoke the Flames. Now, if William draws Obs on Charm, the game's over. Didn't draw that. And all he can do is show wow. the hand, and Kevin Jones is going to win this game and the match. Two games to one in a game it did not look like he was going to win. Some timely draws gets him out of it. He moves on to 12 and 2. He can draw into the top eight now, my friends. Congratulations to Kevin Jones, and that's why you play on. Indeed. That, that crux, I mean, I, I think William put it on the table like I gotcha, and all it was is going to clear out the board. Kevin, all, all Kevin needed to do was find a removal spell there for Siege Rhino, which he was able to do off Dragon Lord Oja type. And from there, uh, Kevin drew pretty well, but William was kind of out of gas in a weird way. He was sitting on a hand of, you know, an option.